Well, you guys, yes, you read it right. I'm not sure I do recommend XC70 boards at all, but actually what I recommend even less is B650E motherboards. Let's get into it and let's discuss what's going on with all these AMD chipsets since they now just released the X870 and X870E for the new 9000 series Ryzen. So this video is actually going to be very useful for future gen as well, I think, because we already know how it's going to go with new CPUs. Originally, a few generations ago with older CPUs, like I'm thinking about like Intel 7000, like 7700K and things like that, you had the Z series chipset, which was the higher end chipset, and then you had the B and A series chipset, which was the cheaper options, right? What happens is if you had a top of the line CPU, like for example, an i7 7700K, and you put it on an A series motherboard, like for example, an A210 or A110, for example, what happens is uh, the CPU would simply throttle and not run at full speed, okay? And just overall, those were boards with very little I.O., so very little USB ports and basically no features, no LED support, things like that. So it was very much cut down compared to a higher-end Z-series motherboard. Well, that's not the case with AMD modern CPUs, okay? Because if you buy a good B650, you're gonna have LED support, very good I.O., as many SATA ports as you want, as many PCI Express ports as you, as you want. And uh, really, the only difference on paper should be weaker VRMs and lack of Gen 5 drive compatibility and also Gen 5 PCI Express for your GPU. The interesting part is brands did not really care about this. So there are some B650 boards out there with really strong VRMs, so strong that they can handle even the Ryzen 9 7900X3D easily. And uh, by the way, I do not recommend you buy a 7900X3D. If you haven't seen my video on why it is a terrible CPU to buy, uh, maybe go check it out if you're thinking about getting one. VRMs are not an issue because different manufacturers like ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, ASRock, all of them are putting really beefy VRMs on B650. Plus, AMD 7000 series Ryzen's, they are extremely energy efficient. So you don't even need a very strong VRM to begin with because even if you don't undervolt them, which by the way, you should undervolt your Ryzen 7000 series CPU, just do a core optimizer offset and put a temp limit, please, it's super easy. I have tutorials on how to do it for every single CPU, even X3D chips. But even if you don't do that, these are CPUs that really don't draw that much power. We are talking 100 watts, 150 watts. I mean, the 7800 X3D, the best gaming CPU in the world at the moment, draws like 120 watts. So you really don't need any kind of powerful VRMs. I remember the i9 9900K was drawing a lot more than that, and uh, which is why I had to put like a copper IHS on it. But, but anyways, that's besides the point. My point is VRMs is not really needed and uh, RGB and like accessory features are present in B650. So the only reason you would buy an X670 is because of the power delivery, which should be better, which is not, and because of the better I.O. So they have more USB-Cs and like allowed USBs on the back of the motherboard. So if that's something you need, you do need an X series motherboard, but uh, really by dividing lanes and like putting more Gen 3.1 uh, USBs, even on B650, you get very good IOs. So I would say, look at those first. So the only reason why one should buy an X670, in my opinion, is because of the PCIe Gen 5. But here's the catch. There are also B650E and X670E motherboards. These, the E stands for extreme. This tends to be the absolute best motherboard. So the X670E, basically, they should be done with such a high standard that you can put like 16 cores, 32 threaded Ryzen 9 easily. And they should also be the more future-proof ones, uh, as well as, of course, having massive uh, IOs and like all Gen 5 for your GPU, Gen 5 for your NVMe drive, etc. What happens, however, since we are at Timothy Pistols, we care a lot about the price. The problem with B650E especially is B650 non-E doesn't support Gen 5 drives. If you're just gaming, you don't care about Gen 5 drives. Okay, trust me. As somebody who has right in this PC a Gen 5 drive, if you're just gaming, they're useless. But if you're doing any kind of productivity, Gen 5 drives are a game changer. Now, I have covered the Crucial T700 and the Team Group T-Force Z540 on the channel very recently, and they go double a Gen 4 drive. And they're just that much faster for video editing, just extracting file and stuff. They're super useful. So if you do need one, like I do, because you're not just gaming, again, it's very important, uh, then AMD thought, okay, let's release the B650E 
So it's B650, but with Gen 5 support. So in this way, they basically rendered the useless X670, like completely, because if you're smart and in Gen 5, you would just buy a B650E. That's what they thought. But in reality, you should not buy a B650E ever, because in a real world price, they are more expensive than an entry-level X670, okay? So here's my final recommendation to kind of wrap up. All of this was kind of the introduction, but my advice is as follows, okay? If you just want a game and you are buying like 7800X 3D or maybe a Ryzen 5 7700F, which is the best value CPU on M5 in my opinion, but then you want to buy like a better CPU in the future, then buy a B650. I don't really recommend an A620, even though I've done a build with a Biostar A620 not too long ago in an LC Power case. And the build came out great with a Ryzen 7, 8 core Ryzen 7, and it was running flawlessly. Still, I do not really recommend you buy an A620 because of lack of features, the IO is really poor, etc, etc. I recommend you buy that only if you're on a very strict budget or if you want to go ITX. But I recommend you buy a good brand B650, but really you can get away even with cheaper B650. Now, Biostar is a good brand, but for example, this uh, B650 MPE Pro is their lower end model and it's still gonna be plenty fine. I've made a wooden PC build with a 7800 S3D with this and it was running flawlessly. The RAMs were cold. You can buy a cheap one or you can buy a more fancy one, but don't go too fancy if you're just gaming, okay? You're just wasting money. Now, if you need Gen 5 drives, I recommend you buy the cheapest X670 board you can find. Why? Because being X670, they have a certain standard that they have to maintain. I was saying before that B650 exceeded their standards, yes, but X670 has the bare minimum that they have to do to be qualified for the chipset. For example, in my personal build, which is on the channel, I have an X670 Pro from MSI, super cheap board, but it has Gen 5 support, lot of USBs, which is what I needed, and really it does everything I want, and I paid less than a B650E for it. So just gaming, B650, you can also buy a very cheap one. If you care about the upgrade path, get a good B650. Productivity, X670. Really, there's no place in this market, in my opinion, for X670E motherboards, and even less for B650E. Because for example, there is the ROG Strix B650E, E, because, uh, yeah, the name gets confusing a bit, because E, in Asus lineup is like extreme, like they have the A, etc. anyways. And so like that board is like, at least in Italy at the moment, is over 400 euros. And uh, there's just no point in buying that. Like I literally bought my board for 200 bucks and it's an X670. I paid like 250 for it. You see my point. But as usual, if you disagree with me or if you have any point that you think I've missed, uh, just drop a comment down below. I'd really like if my video became like a forum for discussion for things like this because maybe I'm missing out on something and uh, I like to be proven wrong. If you liked the video, if you think it was helpful or at least if it helped you decide what to buy, uh, drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And also I do builds following the recommendations I give here on the channel. And again, undervolting tutorials in case you're interested. So maybe check them out and uh, see you guys soon on the channel if you decide to stick around and bye-bye. Uh,